So I was reading through this exclusive interview with Mark Rober from the magazine that I get as an alumni of my university when I read this. Apple says that the patents that list Rober as the lead author would be the invention of the decade. How's it going everybody? My name is Garrett and I love VR. And as a game developer for VR, a content creator, and just an investor in VR in general, I am very immersed in VR and literally down in the trenches when it comes to all the news, the latest and greatest things, and I don't really have anyone to talk to about that. So I wanted to try making a video where I talk about my opinions, the things that I've found, and share them with you guys to get your opinions and feedback on them. I want to discuss VR, I want to talk about the latest news, and I want to do it with the people who love VR as much as I do, which is you guys, the VR content community. So this video is going to be very different from what I usually do. It's not a devlog, it's not a tutorial. I'm just going to be talking about my personal opinions about some of the latest news and great things that are happening in the VR world. And I just want to share it with you guys because I'd love to get your feedback on it and hear what you guys have to think about it. So let's jump in and keep talking about Mark Rover's involvement in VR. So why, why would it spark my interest if Mark Rover is involved in VR? Well, think about this for a second. Mark Rover is one of the biggest YouTubers on YouTube and he became that by doing one of the most boring subjects that most people hate in school, physics. Physics and mathematics. The guy has found a way to make one of the most boring and uneventful <laughs> subjects fun, entertaining, and now generates millions of views every video he puts up there. So when I think about his involvement in virtual reality, especially Apple's virtual reality, it just gets my gears turning about the contributions he could have made. Now, like I said before, his name is listed on several of Apple's patents for VR, and I looked them up and read them through. Most of these patents have to do with self-driving cars and mostly using VR in cars in general. It looks like these Apple patents are a process for helping a user feel comfortable while sitting in a moving vehicle. Most of the patent was saying that as the user is using their virtual reality headset, there would be some sort of audio or visual cue that would alert you to being in a moving vehicle and allow you to not feel the motion sickness that you feel typically in VR from not being aware of the outside motion of anything that you're in or standing on, right? At first glance, it's kind of like, okay, cool. What, what good does that do us? But you gotta think about this, cars. Everyone uses their phone in the car, right? And that is something that Apple is blatantly aware of. And so if Apple is designing their VR headset to be comfortable, in VR while driving, that goes to show something about what Apple is thinking VR is going to become. What was I talking about? Oh, Apple's involvement in VR production and the fact that they think it's gonna be common enough to be in everyone's car and people will want to be using it inside of a vehicle. That tech alone is absolutely incredible and something that might be worth looking into for other companies. And the idea being that you implement real world motion, whether you're in a moving vehicle or whatever else, and you implement that into what the user is seeing inside of virtual reality so that they don't get sick while using the thing in a car or something. Personally, I've never tried using virtual reality in a car, um, but the applications that Apple specifically do this in their patent, things like being able to see a screen a little bit farther away or being able to view you know, a movie or multiple screens, mostly productive use cases for their um, this um, VR inside of driving cars. Very, very interesting to think about. But that leads me to the next thing that I really want to talk to uh, with the re virtual reality community, and that is the impending virtual reality war. Apple is invested in VR. Microsoft is invested in VR. Tesla, that I don't actually know. <laughs> Facebook is in virtual reality. These are three trillion dollar companies that are invested into the future of virtual and augmented reality. And that means they are seeing something that we are not which is the impending adoption of virtual and augmented reality. It is very interesting to observe the actions of all the players in the virtual reality game right now, which can help us make some predictions for what's gonna happen in the future. All these different players are making different moves and positioning themselves properly to do certain things. Apple in particular, I've noticed, is the kind of person now who does not innovate but perfects other people's innovations, right? One of their latest releases is the location tags. Those are not a new thing. 
there's a company called Tile, which has existed for quite a long time that did exactly the same thing that Apple does. But Apple, what they did is basically sit back, wait, and see that that was a thing that lots of people wanted. And they made their own version that's really user-friendly and perfect for all the iChurch and released it to the public. Now, I feel like they're waiting to do the same thing with their VR patents. Right now, Oculus is kind of the sole competitor in the VR scheme. It's not completely mainstream, and so Apple is sitting back and waiting to see what people like and don't like about that, and then release their perfected version for the community to adopt. Everyone knows this. And there's some really interesting moves that I think they've been making in order to force Apple to be less closed with their software. It is a pain in the butt to develop for the Apple Store because you have to deal with all of Apple's specific build requirements, their verification system, and don't even get me started on their certificates and signing, it is a nightmare. We don't want that for VR. And it looks like the community at large doesn't want that, which is why almost every company has adopted OpenXR as the standard for all virtual reality coding across the board. Now that is very interesting because that puts Apple in a very precarious position. They have to use OpenXR if they want developers to port popular games that already exist in the VR world over to their device. Everything is already built on top of OpenXR. That means that either Apple's gonna have to play nice with others or they're gonna create a completely isolated environment that no one's gonna use, which virtually boxes them out of this giant war and competition. But they're not the only big player who's coming to this party. Let's look at PlayStation. This is the company that I am the most worried about when it comes to the survival of companies like Oculus. And don't get me wrong, with Oculus being a Facebook product, there is plenty of controversy around it, but I really like the Oculus Quest. It's a really great device. It has a great amount of content, and I've been developing sale for it, and I've really been impressed with their developer relations. They've been very open with me about the things that need to happen there, and they've provided more than enough resources. In fact, this Oculus Quest 2 right here is the brand new 128 gig one that just came out and they sent it to me for free because I'm a part of the Oculus Launchpad program. So huge thanks to Facebook for sending that to me and again like I've been very impressed with their developer relationships. And on top of that SideQuest VR is mostly based on Oculus Quest content. Which, that's another huge news that you should take a look at, is that SideQuest just got $3 million to create their developer program. That's a lot of money, guys. And I know Shane and Orla, and they've been super helpful on my journey because I've put sail on SideQuest, and we've gone that whole route, and it's been absolutely incredible. They've been so helpful and so wanting to get this out to as many people as possible, and I think SideQuest is a huge, like, we have to thank them for the mass adoption of VR because, let's be honest, 90% of the content on our quest comes from side quests, right? Sony. The PlayStation VR headset that was released with the PS3 as a, like, I think it was a seasonal thing, brought more people into VR than any other headset has. Well, I guess Oculus is getting pretty close, but it brought a lot of people into VR. The point is, they had amazing content. Actually, the PlayStation VR was one of the first headsets I tried and it was incredible. Did try out Doom VR, I wasn't super impressed with that, but big titles. The, the idea is that Sony has connections to big studios with big titles and common things that people would love to try in VR. Now, there's been tons of rumors and tons of leaks about potential things that could be coming with the um, new PlayStation 5 VR headset. And just seeing the controllers alone, I guess is in big trouble. Now, there's plenty of things they can do to screw up. One of the big ones is keeping the wire that they've said they're gonna have, that is dumb. I think if PlayStation were to use the AirLink model that most people have been following right now with VR development, which is you have a smaller, less powerful device that connects to a more powerful console or PC, that's gonna be a lot more competitive in my head because Wires are annoying, they just are. So the more freedom you have while using a VR headset, it's gonna be better. What I'm saying is, is once Sony decides to join the game, they're going to be bringing in huge titles, huge software developers, and probably have a lot of exclusive content that's gonna be out of this world. Combine that with their haptic feedback triggers that are already on the PS5, that's gonna be an incredible headset. And so you have already a major competitor that is going head to head for, you know, the commonplace VR people. But 
we have to consider some of the other things as well, which is why it's going to be very interesting to see what Oculus announces at this next Oculus Connect that they're planning for later this month. Oculus is in a comfortable position right now, right? They're the top dog. No one else is really competing with them. Their only competitor could potentially be Pico Neo if they ever release in the United States. But right now, Pico is basically dominating the China market, which the China market kind of got a huge slash because children are no longer allowed to play for more than three hours. If you haven't read about that, that is super interesting. You should definitely go take a look at that. That takes a huge market out of it. And Pico Neo was just, um, they were just acquired by ByteDance, which is the same owner of TikTok which is an $80 billion company, which means they have plenty of resources and the ability to get into America and compete with people like Facebook. Regardless, the interesting thing to me is that Facebook has this Facebook Connect and they already have tons of data on VR users. And one of the big things that I think Oculus lacks right now is content, but they actually don't lack content because if you look at it, the Steam statistics show that over, what is it, like 30% of the headsets that are connected to Steam, they own the vast majority of Steam users that use VR, and that is something that Facebook is not going to ignore. Now, the reason I bring this up is because of some job listings that Google has been putting out. Google has been asking for Stadia employees that are very familiar with virtual reality. This is purely opinion and just kind of wishful thinking on my part, but what if, what if Oculus released a cloud gaming service? Now, just hang on for a second and let me explain like what I mean by that. Oculus users love PC games. Oculus also recently blocked the publishing of a couple of cloud computing streaming apps that allowed you to connect to a PC wirelessly and stream PC VR content. The last time they did something like this was with Virtual Desktop before they released Airlink. And it's interesting to me to think that they've done the same with similar apps to a cloud gaming content. If they were to release this, which if I were Oculus and I were Stadia, that seemed like a really good pair. Stadia, as far as I know, is not doing extremely well. I, I actually don't know that. I just know it's not very commonplace. However, Stadia now has the infrastructure and the computing power to support large scale com like cloud computing for cloud gaming, right? And with that, Oculus has a really good relationship with Google because the Oculus Quest is built on top of the Android platform. And Android is owned by Google. So I would imagine they have a really good relationship already, and this is somewhere where both teams would be mutually benefited from a relationship of this kind. Google Stadia would get more users, and Oculus would have a cloud gaming service that they can offer to their users for a subscription that will allow them to play the games that they're already playing via means of, you know, Airlink and virtual desktop and all the other things. Wishful thinking on my part, I'm really hoping Oculus announces some kind of cloud gaming service at this next Connect. I think it would be epic. But if Google decides to revamp their VR program and make their own cloud gaming service for VR, that could definitely prove to be an extremely competitive part in this VR world that we've been talking about. It's really interesting to be a part of this as a developer because I don't necessarily I mean, I'm not a big developer yet, obviously. Sale hasn't quite taken off yet, but it will soon, trust me, it will. It's been cool to be a part of a growing community that evolves so fast and that people are adopting. And like, I mean, we are defining what virtual reality is going to be in the future. But that also puts a lot of pressure on our hands. We need to make sure that these companies aren't just taking us for our passion, but also are being responsible with the dollars that we give them. Anyway, I, this has mostly been me just rambling about some really cool news that I've seen, but it's incredible. Like if people as influential as Mark Rover are getting involved in this and every single billion trillion dollar company practically <laughs> is being becoming involved and invested inside of this technology, something they have seen some sort of vision that the rest of us maybe don't realize yet. And I think it's cool that people like me and you are a part of the early adopter phase and we'll be able to help define 
the next generation of this computing power. There, there's my ramble on the VR war that's pending doom <laughs> and all that stuff. But I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on any of the stuff that I talked about today. If I messed up my facts, which I sure I did. I mean, this is me literally just spitting out stuff from my brain that I've read. I feel like I have a decent memory, but I'm just human. I can screw up. So please fact check me down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on any of these things that you have like that I've talked about. I would love to discuss more if there's other news that I didn't talk about. Like I know I didn't mention the Steam Deck and the possibility of Steam entering the standalone VR headset world. I'd love to hear your thoughts on stuff like that. But anyway, this was really fun guys. I love talking VR. I love talking, you know, hypotheticals, wishful thinking. Um, and if you'd like to see me make more content like this, please leave a like and I'd be happy to make more stuff like this when I'm not making devlogs and other tutorials. So please just let me know if you want me to keep making this kind of content by making a like and leaving a subscribe and I got that totally messed up because I'm dumb. But anyway, um, I had fun with this. So it was really cool to kind of get some of this stuff that I wanted to talk about with the community off my chest. And I appreciate you watching. Um, so thank you. And I'll see you around.